This one is a common fallacy that most people don't really think about. When Turing wrote his paper, he was following the uh, ideas of Gödel and um, in calculation. So to Turing, a computer was a person because back in the 1930s, a computer was literally a person who sat down with a pen and paper and wrote numbers. Now, when he was talking about computable numbers, and this is the key at the heart of this, a Turing complete machine is a machine that can compute any computable number. And the word here is computable. We're taking something that is not infinite, but unbounded. Now, in a hypothetical computer, the concept of saying it's not Turing complete because it can't compute an infinite number, it's uh, rather crazy when you think about it because you can't ever compute an infinite number. That's the issue. It's not computable. So these people who say that you need loops um, that keep going on forever and fail within Bitcoin, otherwise it's not Turing complete, are missing the key aspect of what Turing completeness is. It is the ability to calculate any number. Bitcoin has the ability in script to calculate and verify any number. Now, one of the other aspects people will talk about, of course, is if it's really Turing complete, it needs to be larger. But that's the same with any computer. We can say right now, we can not compute certain numbers on a Intel uh, Pentium machine because we'll run out of RAM, we'll run out of hard drive, etc. That's a different issue. That's just down to the semantics of how much storage you have. And in theory, you could stop the processing and restart the value with, um, after writing it down on a piece of paper or a long enough piece of paper, etc. So the simple answer is Bitcoin is Turing complete. Unfortunately, many people don't actually know what that means. They don't understand the nature of computation.